So today you're going to learn something quite interesting. I'm going to show you how to use volumetric lights inside of Eevee on top of cycles. So the benefit here is you're not going to fight with noisy volumetric lights and cycles. And also you're going to save a lot of render time. So for me personally, there's only benefits using volumetric light in Eevee since the look and the visual quality really is almost the same as cycles volumetric system. So we're just going to hop right into Blender. I already uh, created this default scene, so I just kind of got ready for this tutorial. I just got a simple camera with a look at or a track to um, constraint on top. Uh, you can just copy it if you want, but it doesn't really matter. So my other uh, setup here is a spotlight, uh, so it's easy to visualize the volumetric light. And also I created a tiny animation, just two locations, keyframed, and it looks at the monkey head because it's using a track two constraint. So this is what my scene looks like. There's no volumetric light. It renders quickly, just classic cycles. So what I also created is a big box. So this is my volumetric area. This needs a material with a volumetric scattering node on top and you can change the density of the volumetric light. So now we've got a classic volumetric scene. Uh, so smoky room or whatever you want to call it just volumetric light um, and it looks cool um, and you could do it this way but as mentioned in the intro uh, this will render longer um, and also you'll fight with noise all the time. So in this simple scene noise isn't a huge issue but from experience I can say that if you have multiple lights and volumetric light inside a apartment or I don't know something more complex than this you're definitely going to have noise issues and you're going to have to turn up the sample rate way higher and the denoiser is going to freak out a little bit. I don't know, just a lot of issues with volumetric light. So I usually try to not use volumetric light or I use this technique that I'm about to show you. So um, now once it's finished, um, the rendered, wait. The render. So now the rendering is finished. Uh, it took 48 seconds, so not too long, but if you multiply this by 100 frames, it really adds up. And if you have a bigger scene, of course, it's gonna add up even more. So now I'm just gonna turn off or delete my volumetric cube real quick again and do another render. So uh, in the new render without the volumetric light, everything's set the same, all settings are identical, uh, it took only 12 seconds, so way faster, only deleting the volumetric cube. And like I said, we're just using one spotlight here, nothing complex, quite simple. Uh, this will get way more complex uh, if you use a bigger scene. So. But even in this tiny scene, it's already worth using Eevee. So now we're just gonna hop over to Eevee real quick. Get my cube back. So in here you see it looks similar, but not good. Usually I wouldn't render an Eevee. Uh, I also personally almost never use Eevee. I would like to use Eevee, but it just doesn't look good. Uh, but what looks good is the volumetric light. And not only does it look good, it's sample free or uh, noise free. It's not sample free, but noise free. So it's instantly clean. You don't have to like sample it up and denoise it. It just is a clean volumetric light. And I and I personally think it almost looks identical to Cycles volumetric light, so it's really usable. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're basically gonna create a black and white mask, just like in Photoshop. So you could probably also do this differently, but in this simple scene, I'm just gonna do it like this real quick. So what I want is a black and white mask. We can basically blend over the Cycles rendering later on. So I'm just, so to do that, I'm just gonna uh, use the emission shader on the monkey head and on the floor and just turn down strength or color to black, doesn't matter, uh, just so there's zero shading and the monkey and the floor and everything else is completely black and we only have this white volumetric light. And as you can see, the render time is enormously fast. It's um, less than one second per frame. So very fast and I didn't tweak any settings here so I could reduce the sample rate in, on EV also and it would go even faster. Um, so yeah, it's super fast, like it's real time. Um, so this is what we're gonna render out. So I'm just gonna speed through real quick. 
And this right now is actually real-time rendering. So you see the frames down below, how fast it's just shooting them out. And if you want to render even faster, a little quick tip I didn't use here, uh, you can do a viewport rendering. So you go under view and render viewport in Eevee, um, in Cycles. This, of course, does work in Eevee, it works. Uh, and it doesn't have to load up the whole scene every time. So it's just going to uh, use the buffer it already filled up with the monkey head and everything and just hit out these... Uh, rendering so it's going to render way faster uh, i didn't do it here because i'm used to cycles but if you want to speed up your process you could do that just a little quick tip on the side viewport rendering um so now uh, i rendered out the cycles as well it's yeah the same scene but without the volumetric light so everything without the volumetric light so now next we're gonna just clean up my blender viewport here real quick or my ui whatever you want to call it or interface. Um, so now we're just going to split up the screen. We're going to open up the video sequencer, a very rarely used window, but it's actually pretty cool. So open another one and select preview. So this is where we're going to see our rendering basically. Um, now we're going to import what we rendered. First, we're just going to import cycles. So there it is. Uh, now we're going to do the same with Eevee. So we're just going to import our Eevee uh, images. So now we got our sequence of images and now they're on top of each other. So if I play it, then you see we only see the volumetric light because on top. And if I hide it with H, you see there's no volumetric light. So how do we put this together? We're going to use a blend mode called screen. That works best in my opinion. You can use whatever you want, whatever works best. I like this. And now we can just turn it on and off. We can change opacity. We can fade it in. We have way more control, but also we saved a ton of render time. We have no um, noise issues. I don't know. I see like really purely benefits, so many benefits uh, that I don't know why you would even render volumetric light in cycles unless you're lazy, but you're going to wait longer at the end. Maybe for a still image, um, you could render in cycles and use volumetric light. But even there, I had so many issues with noise. Um, it's just annoying. So I'd do this probably in any case. Um, so now uh, I'm, we're just going to render out the video. So we could render out another image sequence. But in this case, I'm just going to render out an MP4. The rest, just keep it how it is. Um, go to render. If you have a render border still on like I do, uh, you have to turn that off using the video sequencer. So here, just turn it off. And then render out the animation. So this is going to go super fast since it's only rendering out images um, or the source of rendering is only images. There's no 3D involved anymore. Uh, so it's kind of like After Effects or whatever. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So the final result is a super quickly rendered clean noise-free volumetric light that you can even control in post. So blend in, blend out, turn on, double the strength, half in the strength, whatever you really want to do with it. You just got way more control. Also, this technique is basic compositing. Uh, so not only for volumetric light, you can use these kind of techniques. You can split up any rendering in many multiple layers and also use the video sequencer in general. Um, I just wanted to show the video sequencer because I think a lot of people first don't even know it exists and second they don't know what to do with it. This is one thing you could do with it but actually you can do a ton of things with this uh, using different kinds of masks. You can render out masks, you know, you can have like a scene with black and white cubes floating around or I don't know and use this as a mask. So wherever there's a white cube you blend in this image, wherever there's a black cube you blend in the other image so you can like fade over and I don't know you just have to be creative. Uh, you can do a lot of things with the video sequencer. Um, so yeah. That's the video about a video sequencer. <laughs> I said this word quite often by now. Um, I hope you have fun. Try to stay creative. Maybe you get some other cool ideas that I haven't thought of. You can always share. It's always good to know. Um, so yeah, that's it for today. Hope you learned something new. And actually, I bet you did because really almost no one I know somehow knows about the sequencer for some reason. So yeah, have fun. Goodbye and see you next week.